Hi, Grant. Hi, Petra. Thank you for participating and uh, thank uh, the EBA folks for inviting me to participate in this project. It's been very, it's been a lot of fun. It's been very interesting. Oh, I, I do thank the EBA for this because that was quite a discovery. But I do have a critique and it is, I just sure. love, yeah, I just love your poems. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, what did the EBA artist propose to you to do? I like what, what kind of question did he come up with when they... Uh, uh, they didn't really have a question. They, they asked if I was interested. Um, I think they had, um, like I say, in, in making arrangements for what they already knew was going to be a virtual open studio. I think they were looking for, for, um, for different approaches and for, for different sort of content. Um, uh, I'm, uh, you know, and they decided that um, it would be interesting to um, get, you know, a, a, a literary component, I guess. Um, and I think Joyce remembered that um, uh, typically when I go through their open studios, she's got an old typewriter there, and I usually sort of tap out uh, like a, 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 a short poem on her typewriter, and I think she she remembered that, so uh, uh -huh. uh, they, they asked me. But but aside from that, they didn't have any um, um, plans or preconceived notions as to what they wanted. They, how did you decide how to do it and what method to take? Um, well, in, in talking to them, um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a process poet. Um, anything I write, I write it's based on other text. However, I collect the text. Uh, it may be a piece of someone else's writing. Um, it may be word lists or bodies of words that I've accumulated somehow. Um, so I always work. I'm always working with a base. I'm always working with another text, and I'm always working with something that somebody else um, has, has essentially written. So um, you know, the idea of applying this to artist statements was 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 a, a, an obvious idea when once we started thinking about it i also um you know i went into the website i looked at the material they sent me i looked at the 360 visual tour that they're doing um you know sometimes i used the names of pieces um the colors that, that they were using in their work and that sort of thing just as sort, sort of the raw material so you, you work with found materials. That's the, yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, it, it varies from project to project, how much finding I have to do. I read in your bio and I see that you're making paper and prints and that you like ink, metal, paper, letters, sounds and words and combinations thereof. Yeah. It, is, it is actually, when, when I think about it, a very strange combination because you're, you're you're combining, you know, very tangible ma uh, materials with intangible things like words that, you know, refer to something that is an idea or a feeling, something ephemeral. So um, I was wondering if you could comment on that combination. Yeah, I tend to see it all being on the same spectrum. Um, I do come at this, or I, I originally came at this from a a small press perspective. So I was um, doing small magazines and, and, and that sort of thing, um, printing poetry. Um, and then I got into paper making and I got into letterpress publishing or into to letterpress printing. Um, and it all seemed to me, it all, it's all on the same spectrum. Um, um, you know, I'm, if, if I handset type, I'm actually moving sort of little lead letters around to, to make words and, and to, to make texts. Um, and then I'm stamping them into the paper that I've, you know, actually made, uh, that I've actually made by hand. Um, so to compose poetry this way, it, it, it just, you know, it, 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 it seems very natural to me. I'm, I'm basically, I'm, 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 I'm taking found words and I'm moving them around until I like the way they sound or, 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 or they read. Or, or I, I like the sense they make. I'm a follower of uh, John Cage's notion. Um, he, uh, he was an American composer, but also did some writing. Um, and he used, um, mistop, he used um, mistop, techniques and chance operations and that sort of thing. And his, his line was, 
I have nothing to say and I'm saying it and, and, and this is poetry the way I need it to be. So he, his, his, his method was to keep his ego out of it. Um, and I, I follow the same thing. I, as an I, don't need to show up in any of my poetry. And I kind of took that approach with these ones as well, that, that I wanted to keep the artists as people out of their poems, just so it, you know, I, I didn't want to um, have the poetry too particularly identified with the individual artists. I, I didn't want the poems to, to read like they were coming from the artists. You know, I, I didn't want them to read like statements from the artist, I, 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 or, you know, yeah. I think this, or I'm doing this. I, I wanted them to, to kind of stand separately and to um, be objects on their own. Uh, yeah, and I think you really succeeded. Uh, I do find that because I know the artists, of the, some of them very well, I've been following their work as well for years, the poems that you wrote for them. I, I just really got a very strong sense of their work, but also of the person. It was not, it was not a way of pinning down the person, you know, yeah. like, like in their own statements uh, um, or pinning down the work like they sometimes try to do in their own statements, you know, they yeah. Yeah. Are pretty, uh, well, well, you know, pretty forced, right? The, the, the artist statements. Um, yes. Yeah. There are a lot of jokes that go around about artist statements. <laughs> you can make fun of them. But I mean, with that, that, that it, it, it goes beyond words. You know, it goes deeper than words. It, it's a really uh, kind of strong sense of the person, but without really being able to pin it down. Does, it, does that make sense to you? <laughs> uh, yes, and, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Of course, I only have my own perspective on the things. And, and like you, I know a fair number of the artists. There are um, a number of them whom yeah. I only know to see, you know, I, I, whom, who, whom I've only seen a, a couple of times mm -hmm. um, at Open Studios. There's at least one whom I don't think I've seen at all. But it's, it's good that, if, that you think that the, the, the poems, they fit the art and they fit the artist without them being too prescriptive you know, the intention wasn't to exactly represent what they do, but the intention was also not to make something completely different that was completely unrecognizable. It, you know, I, I wanted to, to, I wanted to be, you know, at least in, in the same ballpark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, I think you definitely did that. I still think that they're very um, individualistic. They're very yeah. much show a difference between the uniqueness of each artist and, and artwork. There's some artists here that are, I think, kind of soulmates of yours, <laughs> if, I, if you want to put it that way, uh, because they work with letters and with words yeah. in a very materialistic way, especially, of course, um, Christos Pantieros poem. Yeah, that kind of wowed me when I saw that and you had made a, a completely, what seemed to be completely illegible a rectangle of capital letters. But yes, all the uh, phrases and statements are in there. Yeah, the first lines almost explain your own working me methods and of mixing concrete with, and then he, it says, confessional, and, and I'm quoting here, confessional in concrete and silica, an unlocking of intimacy and the weight that it carries. I, I was wondering if uh, Christos' uh, uh, work was the one that you had most fun with because it seems closest to your own practice. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I had lots of fun with all of these. Um, his, uh, I knew from the start that I was going to be doing something concrete, something visual as opposed to the other ones where it was, where, where it was going to be textual. Um, so I, I kind of left it to the end and gave it a little, and, and, and you know, so, so I, I gave it a chance to, to kind of percolate. You added something here in Christo's poem, you added a lot of letters, right? Yes. And uh, that made me wonder if you added other things that 
in, in the other poems, other words, or if you maybe juxtapose them in strange ways? Or? Yeah, well, I, I certainly, as I say, I didn't feel myself obligated to just kind of repeat what the artists, you know, had, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't feel myself obligated to repeat the artist statements. I'm, you know, just by rote. I, I was quite happy to move things around and to rearrange things and, uh, you know, and so I, I did, I'm sure I, I changed a lot of things, you know, just, I was aiming for sound and rhythm and, and assonance and, you know, so you, you have to sort of move things around and you've got to change things to make that happen. So from another artist, Mana, Mana, who is also one who works a lot with words, uses the word, the words in an aesthetic way, right? I have worked with her quite a bit, actually, especially in an exhibition here at Ria at our house. And I, I was really impressed with that work. She also uses the paper as objects and not just to hang on the wall. There were papers you know, on the floor and people were yeah. handling them and moving them around. I, I noticed that you, that uh, she also uses her words different, differently though. Some of it is very expressive and some of the words are more used in a, in a ritual, in a ritual and way. And you, you write about that in your poem. And I was wondering if you could talk about that, of, about the reference and ritual in her work. The way it looks to me, um, having seen her, her work over the years, is that um, she, she does use text, but she writes it. it it's a very calligraphic, yeah, tribal yeah. almost approach to words. Um, and I quite like that. And uh, it, I mean, it, it, often her work looks like it's, you know, it, it would, you would, you, you should be reading it off of a scroll or something like that. Um, it looks very, um, I don't want to say primitive. I want to say it looks pre-print, pre, pre-industrial. -pre you know, it, it looks like, you know, this is someone who could be, you know, in a monastery, sort, sort of writing this stuff out by hand. And it's a it's 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 a much more um, yeah ritualistic physical approach to writing the word you know than than hand setting type or to to printing it off right. on a printer or yeah. something like that. I, um, yeah, you know, it's the hand that is involved, and I'm thinking yeah. of like all the names you wrote out of the hundreds of yeah. There's there's thought and art put into the actual you know into the formation of the words. Like I say, it's yes. it seems to me a very um, Oh, I don't know. Uh, I just lost the word. Uh, calligraphic approach yes. to writing and to, to, yeah. to, to making art. And that, that just appealed to me. But I'm, I'm just thinking also, though, about like uh, uh, the, the angry words that she, you know, paints with that very material uh, black ink, you know, yeah. that, then I, I think, you know, the material, the material and the word then really fuse. So she, she basically, I think, uses the words in two different ways. And one of them is the ritualistic way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joyce's process is also pretty close to your process. Maybe yes. you didn't use words, but somehow, uh, uh, yeah, there, there is, yeah, the, the the words of the last sentence in her in her poem, uh, if I can read it, the exploded remains of contemporary civilization wrapped around our new virtual visceral world in process, print, pattern, and point. Some of what Joyce does, not all of it, but but with a lot of what what Joyce does, she does work with with found material, with things that she's repurposed, found objects. You know, they they go back to, I mean, you know, Marcel Duchamp was was using them a hundred years ago. I mean, I've always let I've let, I've liked her work because she she has used found material, in 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 a lot of it, which is you know exactly the the way that that I work. Um, just in a different medium, basically. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you you look at um, her exploded truck tires, and you know exactly what they are, and but they do that sort of defamiliarizing thing where you know what this is, 
but this isn't where you expect to find it. In many respects, that's what I try to do with words. I'm you know, sort of rearranging them in a way that, um, you know, perhaps you aren't used to seeing, you know, especially with, with the artist text, for instance, as you were saying earlier, an artist statement, they kind of all read alike mm. in many respects and they, they all work the same way and there's not a lot of jokes and, you know, there, there, you know, there isn't a lot of poetry to it. So, you know, I've, I've taken the material of their statements and rearranged them in such a way that hopefully you'll see ideas and images in a different way. From a found object to dance, Dan Sharps. Absolutely. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's quite a leap. You had to make uh, quite some leaps in this project. Well, it was interesting because I, I completely agree with you about the abstraction part of it. Um, but with someone like, like Dan, it's, it's just paint. Um, and I would have found that hard to get into, except when I saw the images that um, he gave me from his uh, flags series, um, something sort of leapt out at me. Um, several of them had um, were sort of blue and green representations of just sort of wavy lines. It, it looked like a you know an almost abstract version of water, and again this this little sort of thing jumped out at me that. I knew that the Egyptian hieroglyphic sign for water is this sort of wavy line. Um, and I also knew, uh, just because I'm interested in, in these things, that the Canaanites um, used, the, when they were first starting to form their, what became their alphabet about 1800, 1700 BC, they took the Egyptian sign for water um, um, in their language, what, um, uh, what, uh, the word for water was mim or mem, um, and using acrophony, they, uh, they took the sign for the sound, for, 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 the, for, for the first sound of their word for, for, for water, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the M sound. Mm -hmm. And and they and, and and this is how they they built the 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 first alphabet. They they handed you know the Phoenicians took the alphabet over from them. Uh, the Greeks imported it from them. The Etruscans and the Romans. And so we have our letter M sounds like okay. that. And it was just kind of right there in in his painting. Like I say, that that was I think the only poem where I really imported an idea that wasn't there. Uh, where we go from here, you, it, it was easy for me and for people that know the EDA artists quite well to recognize the who, who the poem was about, even if you didn't know what, you, if you didn't read the title. Yeah. You're making it very easy for some of them when where you put the name, in, uh, the name of the artist as a spine in the middle, like a line oh, in yes, the middle. Yes. Uh, from the top to the bottom right through it and then you know it messes up all the other lines that go from left to right. It's um, mesostics with the text line kind of down the middle that read. Okay. You used the names, I don't know if I said that, but you used yeah. the names for that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Of the yeah. yeah. The yeah that's, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a, a new technique, it's um, like I say, I, uh, I, it's a technique that uh, John Cage and Jackson McClough, for instance, um, used. Um, and I, I mean, I don't think that they invented it either. Um, it's kind of a version of the acrostic, which people might be more familiar with, where you've got a block of text and the first letter of the first word on the line, you know, usually on, on, on the left hand side, uh, reads a word sort of down, down the margin. This is the the same idea, but but it's in the middle of, of of the poem. It's amongst other things. It's an it's a I find it an interesting way to structure something. Um, it it makes the the poems visually sort of interesting, and and as I say, it it imposes a structure. You've got to, um, you know, there are 
a bunch of rules that you can apply to the process if you want to. It imposes a, just a, it, you know, a, a, a structuring formation um, on the construction of a poem. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. I think I, I tend to um, agree too much in in things sometimes, but uh, I there is actually oh you academics yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it I see it as a spine and I was looking yeah. at an image of Sarah Anderson's painting that that uh, shows all these lines and then there is this vague figure in the middle and quite a straight line and. Uh, that kind of made me think of, you know, this, it was echoed in your po in the poem. She writes, Sarah writes in an artist statement that her paintings, and I, I'm going back, to, I went back to the artist statements here because I don't know Sarah's work. I don't know Sarah that well. So, so uh, she writes that as abstract as they may look, they are actually uh, come from very personal experiences. I, I like the idea of finding her in, in those paintings as a person, well, in the, in the abstraction. Uh, and that's actually also close to Pat Kenny, because I know her a little better. And I also know that her work comes from very personal experiences and they don't look yeah. very personal at all, you know? So, but there is that, that person in that in those paintings as it is that a person in the poem and also I thought in Julie's paintings because you chose Julie Julie too to do this um there was always a sense of Julie <laughs> maybe <laughs> because I know her quite well you know with yeah. in her words and in her paintings I, I do get a very strong sense of Julie and in her paintings she does these close-ups yeah you you can certainly with her work you can certainly see or you can certainly feel her actually moving through the landscape. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I thought those were good choices to make if you wanted to put a name in there for, for <laughs> those videos. But yeah. yeah. That's part of <laughs> part of the process of doing something like this where you're um, you know, you're you're rearranging other material, you're setting it up in a constellation, you know, and things are, are coming together and making a sense for me. Um, but, you know, I mean, part of, of the appeal for me for visual art, I've, you know, I've been interested in it for a long time. I'm, I'm not an artist, um, I'm, um, but I like it. And the, the interesting thing is always because I get to, you know, I, I go into a gallery and I see a piece of art and I get to have what I call my conversation with it, where, I bring whatever it is I bring to it and it brings whatever it brings to it to, to the conversation. And I, you know, and I work out if, if I like it, if I work out what it means to me. And this may have a lot to do or nothing to do with what the artist actually intended. Yeah. You know, if I'm looking at a piece of art, it's just me and it's not me and the artist. It's not me and the artist and the artist's background and the artist's education. It's just me and the piece of art. And it's just me having this conversation with the work. Okay, well, there are three more poems to talk about for Taylor Wallow Davidson, whom I have never met and I've never seen her work, but I saw the images. And Marie Bale, who, who I met, I've met only once in real life, but many times online as she is helping us to uh, get these interviews going. And last but not least, Svetlana Svinemar, who I know very well and I've followed uh, for years. I have, you know, curated some of her shows here at uh, RIA. I, I, find, I finally realized at that point that I was categorizing these artists and the poems and, you know, that's maybe the academic in me or whatever, but <laughs> I ended up with these three, uh, three artists that uh, are very much storytellers, all three of them. Their, their works really provoke stories of one kind or another. Um, Taylor's domesticity, for instance, that um, you know, she, ex she shows us with all this, it seems like uh, you know, material that is yeah. textiles that are twisted and so on, and uh, collages of of very familiar domestic things. I shouldn't say you write, but you and Taylor write. 
uh, I'm quoting a po part of the poem here. Hand spun cotton and flax and hand dyed indigo and sumac. And that is regarded, and I quote again, as the stuff of our stories today. For her, that is um, domest domesticity. As, yes. And sometimes the artwork invites uh, also a discussion about specific cultural histories. Although maybe not. I mean, Marais' work, I really don't know very much. I just saw the images, but they, they live very open and, and free and, and really, you know, some of them are almost abstract and then you realize that they are actually, a lot of them are um, faces and of specific people, historical people. And then you realize that yeah, they do make a reference to um, specifically about the history of totalitarianism and, and, and especially a series about Hannah Arendt, who, you know, is a philosopher who has written uh, about that history a lot and very brilliantly. Yeah, I haven't talked about Svetlana. There is so much to talk about Svetlana because she goes into all directions, but she definitely is the storyteller and she gets all excited about the story, uh, more so than her own art. When you talk to her about her art, all of a sudden you're, you know, way up in, uh, in space or way down in, in history with, with, with mythological, mythological signs and whatnot. She gets so excited about what she actually uh, works with. Uh, definitely, these three people are storytellers. I wonder what that did to to you as a as a as with your project, uh, because does that make it easier for you to write or harder to write? Or? I don't think so. Um, like I say, I, I I saw all of the artists as being storytellers in one way or or, or another. Um, right. um, you know, and, and I think most artists are. Uh, sometimes it's more blatant. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or more intentional, but um, yeah. so I, I didn't I didn't approach their work any differently than I approached anyone else's. Like I say, I, I had my process, and Mariah's, for instance, I mean, she does have a um, uh, kind of a um, a she seems to have a single vision. It's not it's not linear, but she's got she has an idea or uh, the impression that, that I get anyway is that she has kind of an idea that she is and, and all of her work kind of flows from this idea. It, um, uh, as you said, she's, uh, there's a lot of um, history and a, uh, a, and a focus on a, on a um, totalitarian, totalitarianism um, European identity and, and that sort of thing. Anyway, it, the, the, the bits of her work that I saw all seemed to fit in a large, you know, in, in like a single large story. Um, and uh, like, you know, it, it made it easier, it made it easy to find a, a through theme to, to string it all together. Mm -hmm. um, for, um, for Taylor Bolo Davidson, uh, yeah, the word uh, domesticity occurred in her artist statement like six times, so you you knew it was important. Um, and uh, I focused on her um, uh, twisted and or twisted taught project, which was very much about um, craft and hand making of you know. Um, fibers and fabrics and dyeing and that sort of thing you know you you can you can see her focus and her and uh, you know her her interest and uh, i mean it 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 harmonized with, with my own approach you know i'm i'm also yeah. a paper man i i like yeah. the making you know the, the the haptic sort of making um of a lot of this stuff um, so that that gave me kind of a, a through line with 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 her work as well. Svetlana's, um, like I say, I've I've been admiring her work for a long time, and I mean she does go off in a bunch of different directions. So 
unlike the other two, there might not have been kind of a a real un you know there there might not be an, an overall sort of unity to her work. But I kind of picked and chose. I mean, I I've, I've liked her um uh um um Makash figures. I, I ended up having to leave hers to the last because initially I didn't get much in the way of text from her. So I kind of left hers to 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 the end. Um, and it gave me a chance to go back to the 360 uh, tour shots mm -hmm. from her studio. Mm -hmm. And there were two sets of, uh, there, there was a set of um, female figures and a set of horses. And they're really striking. There's like 30 horses and I've forgotten how, how many of the female figures there are, but it, they just, they were so there that I knew that I had to, they had to be at the basis of, of oh. what I did. And, and as I said, I looking at these images somewhere along the line, um, I got the lines from a Patti Smith song and uh, the, the lyrics are there, there's just a a few lines in the song and just horses horses oh. horses oh. horses and it just it worked so well that i knew that was how i had to end the poem and so i had to to to, to sort of build it back from that okay well well i'm grant i think i would like to end this conversation now and I want to thank you very much because you have accomplished quite something here, something very different and unique, and uh, it will be a part of the EBA's history for sure. And also, I think it's great that EBA invited you because uh, finally the art world uh, got to hear you talk. <laughs> and, and it was good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to get poetry out of the poetry corner. Yeah. Um, yeah. And into a... But, but you know, I'm, I'm also, you know, there aren't many instances in Ottawa these days where the art world and the literary world actually meet. I mean, yeah, you know, so it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm yeah. very grateful that, that the EBA folks uh, d decided that they, 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 they wanted to, uh, to uh, in include a literary component to this. Yeah. So I, I, again, I, I thank them all very much for, uh, for asking me.